Hello everyone, welcome back to Doom 1. Uh, we're going to load the game. I quit between things to make it easier to deal with the video that I just made, but of course, as you can see in the screenshot, we're about to be beaten the shit out of by a demon. So uh, I think we'll just press let's play. And let's play, let's play. Oh god, sounds... Okay. Still alive. You missed! Fool! Blow up barrels. Okay, good. So there's a cacodemon somewhere, but it has chosen, or it is unable to, reach us. Chosen not to, or is unable to, to reach us. I hadn't picked up the rocket launcher on the vague off chance that it was going to switch to it. Brian, why are you walking around scaring the shit out of me out of the corner of my eye? Don't you know this is a jump shooter that still scares me, even though, as I mentioned in the previous episode, it's very unlikely that using mouse and keyboard, we're going to get into a position where we actually die. This is clearly not even a secret. They've stopped giving me any sort of uh, credit, have you noticed? In order to uh, for a thing to be considered a secret, apparently it has to be really well hidden these days. Because, you know, that, that wasn't a secret. It was apparently not well hidden enough for it to be worth mentioning that I actually found it. But it was nice to have a few extra shells, nevertheless. So this is House of Pain. Yeah, you can tell because when you're looking at the map, you end up walking off the catwalk here and fall into the ouchie and it hurts. Yeah, we'll take 1% tidge point. Nearly got that wrong. Of uh, HP there, so no problem. Lots of teleporting is happening. Uh, now that we picked up a berserk, I mean, I don't feel too badly about the... Uh, very idea of cheesing the shit out of the berserk bug. But that's really annoying and can you stop making all that noise please? Okay, great. So we know where that takes us, but we should jump in anyway. On the off chance a secret is revealed. So this is a secret, not that it contains anything. Whereas the shotgun, which contained a shotgun, was not a secret. I'm beginning to understand the way they are thinking when they created this new area of the game. I'm assuming this I mean, you can tell what they're going for. There's all guts on the floor and shit. And then there's these occasional bits where they've... It looks like they've teleported or transported the uh, bits of the base into hell. Now, we know from the... Um, from the end of chapter text... Thank you for that. That um, the moon base Demos is actually floating over hell, which... Kind of implies that the whole thing was transported into an alternative dimension uh, where hell is a thing that can have things above it. So there's invincibility in there. What do you think these do? Yeah. That didn't do a thing. So, and we also have the perspective of Doom 3, which I'm going to keep beating the drum of, because we know in Doom 3 that... Uh, they had bits of facility amongst very fleshy type corridors and very hellscapey type corridors. So we want to do that. I'm not quite sure whether to pick that up. I mean, honestly, why not, right? Invulnerability. The worst thing that could happen at that point is that we accidentally remained in there and had to wait, you know, burning off some of our invulnerability. That looks a bit of like a sad place to be. We would have to burn off some of our invulnerability to uh, wait for the crusher to get off us, but... You know. uh, I suspect, now I think about it, that the fact that I'm playing the game the way I am, i.e. mouse and keyboard style, is probably the reason why I don't really seem to get any value out of invulnerability. It's a little bit like finding a credit card in the Binding of Isaac, where you go, you know, I could save this for a better time. And then you get to the end of the level and you didn't get a deal with the devil or, you know, the shop was shit and you hold on to it and you keep... Then you get to the end of the game and you're like, well, why did I keep this credit card and didn't make any decent use out of it? So the best time to use it is, in fact, as soon as you find it. Or at least as soon as you can. Uh, especially with a game like this, which has been completely transformed by... That was terrible dodge. That's the sort of thing I do in Isaac as well. Uh, completely transformed by changing the fundamental way that we even look at the game, i.e. it's an uppy downy twitch shooter rather than a um, sort of a challenge 
arcade game. Please. You're not very clever, are you? What opened? Oh. Something else opened. I guess. Maybe it locked me in with a cacodemon. That would make sense. See, that's the sort of thing that in the original version of the game you would not really uh, be expecting, but when you have got a forward, backwards, up and down, you know, four directional uh, control system which allows you to strafe and stuff. See, there, that was a, like a pretty sad place to have found yourself, so I'm glad we're not one of them. Uh, you don't really appreciate the fact that in the original game you would have been not expecting it and then you would have been trapped in and then you would be having to fight the cacodemon and then find your way out. So... I'm just kind of assuming that you're going to fuck it up for yourselves. But that wasn't worth trying. You know, again, there's these bits of technology and that's a door, so that's obviously more of the... Uh, more of the insanity bleeding in merging uh, hell stuff with facility stuff. Wouldn't mind a chainsaw. I'm wondering if I missed one in an earlier level. Woo, hello. Bye. Thank you. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you can see there's a lot of this going on, basically. Oh, jeez. Where... So you, you can... I guess you can slightly see me, so it makes sense that you woke up. Uh, yeah, there's, there's this sort of bizarre, perverse merging of technology and whatever you expect the hellscape to really be made of, guts and brimstone, such that bits of what looks like technology turns out to be a doorway and bits of normal doors end up in these brick hellscape buildings and... I think it's, um, now that I'm appreciating it, I actually quite like the way they've done it, but I only know that they've done it because of having seen, you know, these other games where they did the same thing, more obviously. It'd be interesting to know whether people who were, like, adults at the time were aware of, of that exact thing. Would, like, would our parents have noticed at the time that they were sort of putting these these scenes together of a, a weird ass combination w would they have noticed that oh shit let me out thank you would they have noticed that uh, the intention of having zombies and people on spikes and stuff was to show that the <laughs> the people who used to work in the facility are now trapped at the mercy of these, um... Oh, what did I pick up? I've got the BFG. Fucking A. Uh, that's fun. So we'll, we'll play with that. But as I was saying, trying to find the words very slowly while playing a game, would the people who originally... Would our parents, who played this game when it was new, have realised what it was that the game was trying to do with all these... Let's, um, let's give this a go. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, so the reason I said that <laughs> is that uh, when we got a little bit bored of playing Doom too much, we downloaded a Monty Python sound pack for Doom <laughs> and then replaced the explosion sound of the BFG with one of the Python ears going bada boom, bada bing. So something here opens up. Would they have noticed that it was describing this, you know, manic, bizarre, ludicrous descent into a, a horrible murder of our base and the hell that it's been unleashed upon? Or were they just doing what I was doing and running around going, lol, things to shoot? Right, so these things open with those things. Because you can see those are the pipes and stuff. Those are the technologies. There's a, a glowy thing in there, so that's probably a skull. We'll do this one at a time. Hello? There's nothing in there. Very well. Not all the switches necessarily do anything I expect. Oh, it's invincibility. Invulnerability. 
All right, so that one did that. Fair enough. If we have invulnerability, we might as well punch things because we can cheese up the, uh, what I'm going to assume is a bug, on the part of the uh, berserk bops. But I need a wreckage to open that door. Uh, I mean, it's not that big of a cheese up because of how we would be invincible anyway. It's just we wouldn't get as far. So we need a yellow key to open this door, and we have one. There's a red key in there. So I press all the buttons, basically. They didn't all last. There we go. Is this a door? No. It's not a door I can open. I mean, my dad's my parents' age, right? He would have been at least an adult. I don't know how old he would have been when I was originally playing this game. Seems rude to ask. But as I'm actually playing the game, I'm going to not stand on this if I can avoid it. I'm wondering whether it'd be worth having a chat and saying, do you know, do you remember this about the game? And is it as it seemed? So the, uh, the ammo back there is going to be nice. Was it clear, basically, what was happening? Because look at this. This is red bricks, and that's obviously facility, and this is obviously facility. And then there's red bricks here, and which is obviously hell stuff. But none of those bites hurt, which kind of makes the game seem a little bit too easy, to be quite honest with you. Uh, was it Was it clear? All those annoying things that I keep trying to repeat without using the same word twice without hesitation, deviation, or repetition. Please describe, in your own words, the progression of aesthetic through the various chapters of the original Doom without deviation, hesitation, or repetition. I remember this ladder, actually. It's an interesting way of dealing with the limitations of the game engine at the time. So this is obviously a doorway with an exit on it. Is this a secret exit or the actual exit? Having a word exit on the exit really, really reminds me of Duke Nukem. Not 3D, just the original one. Anybody else feel the same way? Yes slash no. Honestly, I think we've done everything and I don't really care enough to try and look for anything else, so we'll just go through. That looks like the secret exit exit thingy, but whatever. Yeah, only half the secrets. I'm not really trying too hard, and of course, I don't actually know where the secret exit is on this level. It might be... I remember one of the levels has... The door you come into, you can open again, which is silly. But that's okay. I've said before that I feel like... It's a bit early, a bit late, so retrospectively... Uh, I do like this, actually. I remember this. This is really clever. Show me about the texture alignment. That could be a bug in the engine, of course. So remember, a lot of the things you're seeing, if something looks wrong, it could be just a bug in the way the uh, the OpenGL thing works. So don't be too harsh on it, I guess is what I'm saying. I remember this level really well. All the hell levels turned out really, really well, in my opinion. Uh, like They did really well in designing these levels with what is now seen to be a limited engine and making them interesting and memorable. You know, um, obviously they had a lot more to play with in the fact that you can just be completely bizarre and there's a word I want to say and I can't think of what it is. It's not that I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to avoid saying a bad word and if I remember and it turns out a bad word is what I wanted to say then I'll probably avoid saying it but uh, there's a there's a word that really well describes the the manic I keep using the word manic, and it's like a synonym of manic. Maybe I'll look it up in a thesaurus or something. The um, really, really bizarre and twisted merging and hijacking of human technology with these uh, hell beasts disruption of it. And being able to make these really, really horrible uh, like mentally confusing come on there's a word for this uh, the whole place is just twisted and, and wrecked and ruined this is remember when I was originally telling you about 
the way um, a teleporting works. I'm pretty sure around here is where I first heard of it. So that's one of those floors that hurts. So if we do this... Yeah, there we go. Around this... Um, around this whole level somewhere, there's a little tube somewhere that allows sound to get into a teleport room. Which then floods the room full of enemies, which all step on a teleport. Of course, in Hexen... Might have been in Hexen I was telling you about that, actually, because in Hexen, you just spawn enemies with the script, which is fine. Quite like the, uh... What I now recognise is, like, a hellishly hijacked... Um... I mean, I want to say it's like an airport scanner, but for the fact that we just walk through it with shitload of weapons and... Okay. <laughs> uh, it had no effect. It still let us in. But... See what I mean? So here... I mean, you just do this, right? <laughs> I'm like, whatever. There you don't. Door? Several doors. If you just fire every now and then, you can see if anything is going to wake up as a result of it. So that one's a secret, but the rest of them aren't. Nice ones. And then there's a teleporter and another switch. So this switch presumably does the blue key, which presumably brings in a shitload of baddies and scares the shit out of us. These are very loud crushers. Maybe they're Wesley crushers. Don't like this room, but at least I have... Oh look, Berserk again. Oh, these ones can bite me when I'm partially invisible and Berserk. But the ones that just existed out of spite in the previous level, no such thing. Right, so out here... That's the confusing area of the... Oh, hello. Let's just use this. I'm assuming it only boosts our damage for our fist. I honestly haven't tested it. It's not like we have spider mod or something that tells us how much damage we're doing and if we shoot a baddie. So that here is the, the sort of crazy area. So you can teleport between these and they always take you to a different place. They're not linked to each other, which is another sort of mania of, of this level, which is why I remember this level so well. And I was saying, in fact, I remember a lot of all this so very well because the amount of leeway, the amount of messing around and playing they did with... Uh, being able to literally make whatever they want, like these glyphs on the wall and stuff. Whereas for the um, for the actual facility levels, it they, please they um, obviously had to um, be a little bit more rigid. They had to try and evoke the concept of a, a military facility. So that just took us into the middle, which is worrisome. Let's see if we can compare these glyphs. So that's the pentagram. That's the one in the middle. Yeah. That's the one in the middle. And that's the one in the middle. So the only one that does anything different is the, presumably the pentagram. That's the pentagram there, which takes us to this pentagram here. So this pentagram here takes us to that pentagram there. Let's just go somewhere else. Here's somewhere else. We do have a map. <laughs> it's not like we can get that lost. But I am aware that the uh, pillars in the middle of that big courtyard do open up. And I thought they opened up by pressing them, but apparently they don't. <clears throat> Happy with the amount of ammo we've got now as well. We've always got the... Uh, but the boom but a bing For the... Uh... That's the way out, right? Yeah, we've seen that. Okay, so basically we go through this door. Uh, to clear out a room full of horrible, scary enemies, which we may have to do. Let's try it. Here it is. So see that little hole up there? If I shoot this guy... The room floods with enemies. I'm not sure how it decides what the BFG will own and what will not be affected by it. I guess we do it again. Ok. 
Okie dokie. Um, yeah, I was saying that I did really like the BFG in Quake 2. I uh, enjoyed the BFG uh, lore in Doom 3, but I didn't really like the BFG itself. There's another one here. I already have one, but I appreciate that. I enjoyed the lore of the BFG in, in Doom 3 because uh, we get out by doing what? Jumping in here? Oh, there's a button. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it, it kind of explained the existence of something in uh, a game that was trying to be more clearly technological. Like, to have a, a better excuse for its... Oh, there we go. Shit. Let me out. <laughs> uh, let's just use rockets. So apparently we open these up by jumping on that... Please stop moving. Uh, jumping on these... So all of them? No. We jump on these from the inside, which means we have to... Yeah, so they all take you back to the middle. So they are actually linked by the thing that's written on them, which I honestly did not believe was true. I can hear an imp as well, so we haven't killed everything yet. Okay, we know about that one, so let's not do that again. That was just mildly silly, but not... The end of the world? Uh, this one. Please. The fact that it puts you there, but then the thing opens and <laughs> you're uh, in a bit of a dire position. Because you can't easily run out of the thing. Possibly is intentional. I think about it. I mean, it's not like the people who made this game were stupid. It's just that they had not had the experience of many years of uh, of game design, basically. So we've done those two, I think. Yeah, so that's those two. So now we go back... This uh, episode's going on a little bit, so what I'm going to do is find those secrets between this episode and the next and say thank you for watching. Remember to like the video, that helps us, and subscribe to the channel, which will help you learn about new things in the future. And go and check out other content from the other content creators that do uh, upload to this channel. But until the next episode, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.